Hello, I'm Chris Williams from Read Comics, They're Bad For You, the name of my YouTube channel. Or if you're watching this on Library or BitChute, the name of my channels on those two websites is Comic Freak. Apparently, the nightmare is lifted from DC Comics because the guy who's basically responsible for most of its mistakes over the last few decades has been basically fired from it, or is at least leaving the company. Report DC Comics co-publisher Dan Didio, Exix Company. Yes, Dan Didio, the basically co-publisher with Jim Lee, is finally out of DC Comics. So let's read this article and see what's up. Dan Didio is gone from DC Comics as of today. No reason has been given, but the co-publisher stepped down from his duties and parted ways with the company. Comicbook.com reports DC confirmed his departure and will likely issue a statement soon. The site adds it's unclear if Jim Lee will handle publishing duties by himself from here on out, or if a new co-publisher will be appointed. Didio and Lee have worked together as co-publishers since 2010. Before then, Didio was VP of Editorial and then VP Executive Editor for six years. Under their tenure, they oversaw the new 52 Rebirth, 52 Infinite Crisis before Watchmen and Doomsday Clock, which recently came to an end. They also toyed with the idea of yet another reshuffling of continuity, 5G, which establishes Wonder Woman as the first superhero. Diana makes contact with the world of men around World War II. No word dropped as of yet how Didio leaving will affect his proposed launch. I know it said this proposed launch, but it was probably his idea, and him leaving probably means it won't happen, at least hopefully. DC had their share of missteps as well under Didio and Lee. Among them was a folding of Vertigo into the startup of the DC Black Label of the problematic rollout there. He promised improvements during a retailer Q&A. The response and reaction has been better than we could imagine. Our plan is to make sure we're consistent in the material we're putting out and that it's strong and that it comes out on time. We will not be soliciting anything until we are clear that this material will come out as scheduled. That was Didio's response to the DC Black Label that apparently went down in flames. Apparently he wasn't right at all about anything about it. We like the maturity, the sensibility, the quality. The talent is going to be driving this line, he added. We will not overproduce here because we want to make sure this is a long-term plan. Didio won't get to see any long-term plans come to fruition now. He joined a trend that started last year with laying off 240 comic employees, a decision made by Warner Brothers. The writing may be on the wall. Randall Stevenson, CEO of Warner Media Parent Company, a AT&T declared in October, his company has no sacred cows among the assets of theirs to be reviewed over the next three years. He said this in a third quarter conference call with investors. We're committed to an objective, diligent, and disciplined process. We'll analyze the merits of each of our businesses individually and as part of the whole, but let me be clear, we have no sacred cows. Stimson continued by pointing out they've monetized more than $30 billion in non-strategic assets over the last few years. DC wasn't mentioned, but the implications are dour. AT&T seems to forget the publisher exists. DC had a, a reduced presence at Hall H and San Diego Comic-Con, and promotion material for Wonder Woman 1984, as well as other Warner products showed up at a small licensing expo. In WW84's case, they opted to move the trailer's premiere and other announcements to December Comic-Con experience in Brazil. That worked out okay, so there was a small victory there. Last September, former DC Comics artist Ethan Van Skyver predicted on a live stream, I kind of feel like AT&T is going to consider divesting DC Comics, that's what I think is going to happen. I think there's going to be a lot of pressure to do so that's a lot of debt. The reason he sees that is happening is hedge found Elliott Management has a $3.2 billion stake in AT&T. Furthermore, they are not happy AT&T stock is underperforming compared to the competition in the telecommunications industry and the S&P index. EVS discussed a letter Elliott sent to AT&T specifying Elliott's letter also calls on AT&T to streamline its bureaucratic organization, remove redundant positions, and consider outsourcing non-core functions, along with other centralization and other cost-cutting Elliott sees $10 billion in potential annual savings that could expand AT&T's profit margin. AT&T added $85.4 billion in new debt when they acquired Warner Media. Their debt is of August stood at $164 billion. For purposes of monetization, they view Warner Media as a whole greater than the sum of its parts and want to make that money back. DC is a small but unsteady part of that business. It's no secret comic sales are low, especially new comics, and older books from 30 to 40 years ago do better. Didio admitted defeat it said this last year. We do these face smile editions where we reprint older issues of comics including all the old ads and stuff, and in some cases these are selling more than the new comics with these characters. People are more interested in buying the stories from 30 to 40 years ago than the contemporary stories, and that's a failure on us. We should be focused on moving things forward, always pushing the boundaries and finding new stories to tell. That's how we'll survive and grow this industry. His exit is a sign he could not stem the tide. 
or it could be a sign that they're finally rid of his ideas. He just wants to make, as I've heard, DC into a dark, gritty universe, when DC should be the, well, the happy universe. Well, the universe where heroes are the classic cl superheroes we all know and love, not the grim 90s versions we saw back during the 90s. Yeah, that place has its own merits and its own good, but this is DC Comics we're talking about here. They need to be heroes, not the anti-heroes that people basically loathed from the 90s. So I can see after the the term that he and Jim Lee were co-publishing together why they get rid of Dan Didio. A big one is that he got rid of Rebirth because he wanted to do this new 5G initiative thing and bring DC Comics into a more grimmer and, well dark universe, and I can see why Warner Media would want to kick him out of the door. His ideas are not working, so I think Jim Lee should be the publisher now, and I think he'll do well at it. If you like this video, subscribe. Make sure you're still subscribed because YouTube is going around unsubscribing people, so make sure you're still subscribed. If you're watching my videos but you're not subscribed, please subscribe to my YouTube channel. Read comics, they're bad for you. Then go over to BitChute and Library and subscribe to my channels on those two websites. They're both named Comic Freak. Hit that bell for notifications. Hit that like button and leave some comments down below. And if you could, could you also please share this video? Share it on Twitter, share it on Reddit, and share it on Facebook. Share it anywhere you think it'll do the most good. Now listen closely. Please keep checking back in all my future videos for more information on my own upcoming independent comic book scum dogs. I'm Chris Williams and I'll be back again tomorrow with another video or review.